Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Business Show. I'm your host, Tori and Scott. I'm here in Diamond Bar, California, where I'll be interviewing my personal mentor, Coach Al Hollingsworth. Coach Al has been so instrumental in creating and building businesses all over the world and all over this nation and has been doing it for a long time. So come inside as we go and talk to my coach, my mentor, our friend, Coach Al and Hattie Hollingsworth. This is Kingdom Business. Let's go. Okay. I'm a conqueror. We gonna do something a little different this time. Let's go. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means all haters and evildoers can't see me. Casting out all the demons in the industry. Spiritual assassin target X, Y, and Z. See, I'm made from a God who's more than enough. Carries the weight of the world. Yeah, my God is buff. Even when life and reality, they get so rough. I'm cut from iron claw. From man, I'm tough. I'm in the CIA. In Christ, I abide. The FBI. A face spread individual. I got my credentials. Very influential. That's my I'm here with my great coach and mentor, Coach Al Hollingsworth. And so thank you so very much for inviting us to your home on this beautiful day here in Diamond Bar. Yes, and with so. all of our beautiful clouds and, <laughs> and sunshine is, is on its way. It's on its way. It's, it's on, on its, its way. way. Sunshine is coming. And so I'm excited because, you know, we have our conversations. Yes. And I, I really wanted to make sure that you know, I'm getting the great nuggets and I'm getting the great insight and the great mentorship and holding accountable, but I wanted to just introduce everyone to who you are and what you do. So let's just kind of start from uh, the beginning. So just tell us your story of what prompted you to go into business and, the, and d detail to everyone what type of business you're in. Now that's a long story. Now, how much time do we have and what would you like for me to cut out of this journey of over 72 years I've been here on earth oh my gosh. to be where we are today? Wow. But let me just give you a quick summary. Born in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, reared in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, grandfather a slave, father couldn't read or write. However, a brilliant man. Went on, was one of the first to desegregate uh, my high school in the 50s, middle 50s, mid 50s at uh, North High in Omaha, Nebraska. Because of being an, an athlete was well received, I might say. It didn't have to go through much of what we have known to be problems of, of the South when, you know, and what we've seen in many of our cities there mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. But uh, because of being athletic, was able to be one of the first, one of the first to go on to uh, Colorado University as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Not that there weren't others before me, but very few. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a scholarship, athletic scholarship. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I was knocked unconscious in a football game with Oklahoma. And at that point in time, I had known of the presence of a force, a light that would speak to me even as a child, that I would be someone, that I would be uh, protected and I would be safe. Many people who will be listening to this also have met that inner voice of comfort mm -hmm. that was always with me as a child, but I never knew the, who this voice was. Mm -hmm. I just knew it was personal mm -hmm. and it was relational to me. Mm -hmm that I would speak to, and yet I never thought beyond its internal presence, but yet it assured me that I would be, and that I would have a plan, that I would be, and that there was a plan for me. But I had an encounter when I was knocked unconscious, and I had a personal encounter with this voice, this presence, this light, as some people may define it. And it spoke to me that I would be a successful businessman for God's glory. I was out unconscious for about 10 minutes, I was told. 
And when I came back, I was crying. And linebackers don't cry. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That is so there was cool. such a joy. Mm. And uh, prior to that, my uh, my life path was to become a professional athlete. But after this momentary but yet profound experience, it changed my life and I became more academic. I wanted to become a business person. And if you can imagine in the 60s, for those of you who may be too young to go back and rehearse history of America, there were not many successful businessmen in terms of multi-million dollar business in the early 60s. There were a few. But there were not many. There may have been Johnson, and, mm -hmm. and uh, there's one lady that uh, of hair care products, I can't remember her name mm -hmm. now offhand. Mm -hmm. But there were only a handful of really what's considered wealth in, mm -hmm. of African America in business. Mm -hmm. But yet I knew that God had called me to be a successful businessman for his glory. Yeah. And uh, at about 23, I began this journey after graduating and going through some experiences that we won't take time to go through because as I said, that story would go. But at 23, uh, with no money and following a path of serendipity, synchronicity, serendipity, pursuing this, the, where God was sending me and the synchronicity of finding the little bread, breadcrumbs along the way that he would set for me, even though they were unpleasant. I became a businessman and uh, was able to start a business uh, employing about uh, 25 people and what was then about a million dollar investment, it was 167000 then, but it would be uh, about a million dollars yeah. worth of investment today's terms. Absolutely. I started a packaging business, mm -hmm. and today we employ anywhere from 500 to 1,500 people throughout the United States. <laughs> you know, I just love your story because it's just so filled with history and so filled with richness and the things that you had to live through and go through and struggle through and press through, you know, like we talk about. Um, so what, why a manufacturing company? Out of all the businesses that you could have went into, why was it a manufacturing company that you went into? Remember I shared with you that I was, uh, I had a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that changed my life. I didn't mean, I don't mean now just a, a Bible verse, mm -hmm. a personal encounter yeah. of knowing. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in Greek, it's, it's pronounced nous, mm -hmm. knowing, nous, mm -hmm. the inner knowing of the heart. Mm -hmm that this was a real encounter. Mm -hmm. And I knew that there was something beyond just uh, being a, a small business, mm -hmm. in, you know, running a pool hall or mm -hmm. barbershop. Yeah. Yeah. And so I began the journey and uh, as an epidemiologist. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, but I was the first job I had. I was hired. Wow. It wasn't what I wanted to do, but I was hired, and mm -hmm. and I would carry, a, I would wear a white shirt and a brief, I carry a briefcase. Mm -hmm. And for me in the '60s, mm -hmm. for African Americans to carry a briefcase and wear a white shirt and tie, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah. That was like the keys yes, yes. that people often wear to mm -hmm. prove their success on the mm -hmm. outside of their pocket. Wow. And so I accepted that job, but I hated it. Mm. But that job moved me to the next job because I hated it in Seattle. And there was another job that hired me because I disliked this, this job so profoundly that it made me move to another. And uh, this too, I was hired to be a manager in California. And it was in a packaging company. It was in a corrugated packaging company. And I hated it. I thought I was going to be managing people. And I was managing old used equipment. Yeah. They had me back in the storeroom just becoming a clerk of inventory, and I thought I was going to be a manager of people. I'm an athlete. I'm a people person. I'm an outdoors person, and now I'm inside. I hated it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I moved on to another company in the same industry called Fiberboard that hired me as a salesperson, but in essence, I was a gopher. I was mm -hmm. just taking papers mm -hmm. to and fro, yeah. and I hated it. <laughs> And so, but you asked the question, and mm -hmm. I'm efforting to give you this short answer as best I can. Yeah. But in every one of those serendipities about what I hated when it came to 
Nixon coming on board and no longer wanting to have the welfare programs of mm. giving cheese to people mm. and, and and free free gifts, but pull up from the bootstraps was mm -hmm. the it was the term of the day. Let's mm -hmm. get the poor people, the economic uh, disenfranchised folk of America. Mm -hmm. This meant African American Absolutely. and Hispanic <laughs> to pull themselves up by the bootstrap. Mm -hmm. They then opened and made available the Small Business Administration that mm -hmm. would provide access that had previously been denied to minorities. Mm -hmm. But in the 60s, 70s, it began to now make those opportunities available. And I applied and they re told me I would need capital. Mm -hmm. I, I wondered how do you get capital when you don't have capital, <laughs> meaning yeah, money. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that was nice to have, but it took money to borrow money. Yeah. <laughs> but then God took me back to the serendipities, those journeys we go on not knowing the meaning. Mm -hmm. That I was a venereal disease investigator called an epidemiologist, mm -hmm. which I hated. Yeah, of course. But it taught me how to do research. Yeah. It taught me how to now look beyond just information, but go deep into finding, mm -hmm. uh, you know, morbidities mm -hmm. and so forth, mm -hmm. knowing people and, and understanding how to fight out research. Mm -hmm. And the other job that I hated, uh, dealing with the equipment, I hated it, mm -hmm. but yet it taught me that companies had closets, mm -hmm. that they had equipment in closets that they didn't need. And if mm -hmm. I could trade sweat equity, mm -hmm for this equipment that was just in closet that they didn't need and work a, a barter and trade my sweat equity to clean up, to modify and their equipment and work free on their equipment if they would give me access to the title or share title, yeah. that I now could obtain capital mm -hmm. of, of something of value. Mm -hmm. And then I learned from this third that I hated being a gopher, but I got a chance to meet executives and get it even though I wasn't a salesperson people liked me mm -hmm. I found favor with many of the larger companies that mm -hmm. at one at some point I would now either get my obtain my supplies mm -hmm. I was able to meet the executives bringing papers back and forth mm -hmm. and it taught me that I could be in relationship with people yeah. successfully wow. and so with all of those hates mm -hmm. Along the way, it began to provide the intellectual capital of mm. ICANN and mm. the material capital of this used equipment that if I could convince them to uh, mm. trust me to mm. provide, trade my sweat equity for things of their junk they didn't want, yeah. collectively I could take that to SBA mm. and now that became my capital to be able to get a $168,000 loan, which is like almost like a million yeah, today. Of course to start my business and that's how it began. Wow. <laughs> and so the serendipities all led to synchronicities, yeah. those highly improbable mm -hmm. events and circumstances mm -hmm. that God takes us on these journeys mm -hmm. that we we murmur and complain, but yet he's directing our steps. Wow. So, you know, I heard about the what of your life. So we are we already understand that you have an amazing manufacturing company. Mm. Um, along with that, you've been able to produce and be able to purchase some very historic property mm -hmm. in uh, here in California. So tell me about the Al Hattie Resort. Yes. Tell me about that. Remember, you said the name Al. And Hattie, mm -hmm. and so you can tell from my friend <laughs> and wife Hattie Hollingsworth, mm -hmm. uh, it's our dream. That's one of the dreams that we had had. Is that uh, after leaving uh, PTL, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you remember P PTL Praise the Lord Club. Oh, they had yes. a beautiful property yes. back in mm -hmm. back east, mm -hmm. and uh, we had seen that property. One of our children 
had uh, performed with one of the performers there. And we said, something needs to be done on the West Coast. And God put that burden that uh, we needed to honor God with a property dedicated to him on the West Coast. Something that was not just a property, but something we could get really excellence in first class quality, uh, a place that people could get away into the mountains to celebrate Christ. And so with that, we began to look. We knew the principle that if there's a desire of your heart to honor God, that it exists, that now the next journey is a serendipity to the synchronicity of those. Now we must begin to take the journey of looking for what God has already finished in the spirit that we might bring it to the earth. Yes. And so with that, we began to look and we found the property, the old Bonanza movie series, mm -hmm. uh, the West Coast uh, mm -hmm. shoot. Yeah. Uh, we knew it after looking at many properties that that was it. It was, it was nothing on the property. It was just old, 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 terrible, um, you know, what do you call it, front scenes yeah. that mm -hmm. had been used. Mm -hmm. But uh, with that, over the last 23 years that we've been there, we've uh, totally converted it to now it's a four-star resort with golf course, swimming mm -hmm. pool. Some yeah. people say it's, it's higher, but we, yeah. we take the Humble Road four-star with nine-hole three-par golf course and, mm -hmm. and uh, spa and all of the wonderful views that uh, uh, very few people can experience uh, in the mountains. So we wanted to bring the best to God and we've dedicated that property to the Lord for those that would want to come and get away to honor him through prayer worship groups and mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. uh, gatherings etc yeah wow we can accommodate about 150 or so that's it's a boutique resort and it is beautiful it's a very beautiful thing I've been there my family's been there and we've had a remarkable experience and have always heard God crisply and clearly anytime we go up there amen, amen. and so you have a remarkable story of a breakthrough doing something that was trailblazing and starting a amazing manufacturing company in the 60s mm -hmm. where not many african americans have that that type of that type of opportunity mm -hmm. then now buying a historic place yeah. but there's more to your story there's more to what you do you know it's really who you are and so a lot of that has been bled through a lot of these great programs vertical leap as well as boss the movement and so uh, we know a little bit about those two and how you're empowering young people as well as empowering adults to break through and take a vertical leap out of circumstances out of environments mm -hmm. into the place and the destiny that god has called them to mm -hmm. you know to to be that person of purpose That's right. and so talk to me about your why why is it what drove you to create these entities where we where you impact people's lives in such a grand scale and not just in california mm -hmm. you know it's all over so it's not just the california it's not just the united states but we're talking about the philippines the boston but we're talking about jamaica australia africa all of this indonesia all these places mm -hmm. that this boston movement program what drove you to create this purpose. We often teach a, a principle in vertically that Y is a function of F time X. Mm -hmm. And people wonder, what does that mean, algebra in physics? How does that all apply to the conversion of making stuff work on Earth? And one of the principles that I was, uh, I've been a student of long standing for understanding the physics of how things work. Mm -hmm how things work on earth mm -hmm. and how the spiritual, the cycle impacts the soma, how the spiritual impacts the physical because the Bible speaks to on earth in the physical as it is in the spiritual in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so throughout scripture, the, the Hebrews 11, 1, all of the scripture, Romans 1, 20, the invisible things of God clearly being seen by the things that are made, the psychosoma, the spiritual, physical, their interconnectivity. And it reminded me of how God created the wealth that my wife and I enjoy today is because of starting with nothing without having to rob, steal, and kill. How do you get when you don't have it? So there must be something of invisible that impacts the behavior of the physical. 
And so this journey began with understanding the why, the yields of our life. Mm -hmm. The Y stands for the yield. Mm -hmm. And the F stands for the forces. If we had an equal sign, those who may be algebraically related, mm -hmm. understand the e Y equals F times X mm -hmm. in a bracket. Mm -hmm. That the X is the input. Mm -hmm. That the forces of life, those factors of life, impacts the input how we deal with life internally, therefore the yield we get externally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. So if I've been factored this force that inloads the input that I'm not able, mm -hmm. this factor that I'm not smart enough, this force mm -hmm. by parents and environmental that it's not possible, mm -hmm. my yield will be it's not possible. Yeah. But if I can change that factor, mm -hmm. that force that says I can do all things through Christ, yes, yes. and my factor becomes nothing is impossible, yes. all things are possible through Christ Jesus, yes. that will change my input, how I see life, how I see my, we call them presuppositions, mm -hmm. how we presuppose life to be. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a principle that man earns a living and behaves according to his internal concept mm. that I draw unto me, that I behave, I expect, I earn a living and behave according to how I see myself. Mm. And so it is, I found, that that psychosoma, mm. that if we can change one's thought of what's possible and believe it, not just want to believe it, not just hope, but believe mm. that nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. that it begins to change the very mo molecular structure of how life itself comes together yeah. from the quantum mm -hmm. of the smallness of things that mm -hmm. becomes the macro of the bigness of things. Mm -hmm. It's starting with this invisible concept of a belief. Mm -hmm. And Jesus taught, according to your belief, mm -hmm. be it unto you, That's right. That's you right. draw unto you the conditions mm -hmm. of your heart. Wow. And so how would one person begin to foster and develop belief? Well, the, the Bible speaks to it, the same that uh, there's a, there's, there's, in biology, there's a term called myelin, okay. myelin. Mm -hmm. This myelin is a coating that, that it, over your synapses of the brain that with use, this myelin is like if you were, uh, had an electrical cord, you would wrap the cord. That, that wrapping around the cords to, the, to separate the wires from sparking, mm -hmm. is that, that wrapping mm -hmm. would be the myelin. Mm -hmm. And the more wrapping you have, the faster the, the charge mm -hmm. is. And so repetition mm -hmm. is a process of that wrapping mm -hmm. of, the, of the connection. Yeah. And the Word of God says, Faith comes by rapping, hearing, yes. hearing, and hearing, yes. and hearing. Mm -hmm. And that creates the, the speed of mm -hmm. connectivity mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. one's belief. And according to your belief, according to how you rap, be it unto you. Mm -hmm. wow. And so hearing it, and hearing it, and hearing it, and that now I am what I've heard. I, it has become my worldview. Mm -hmm. It has become my character become my core values mm -hmm. and I earn I draw unto me mm -hmm. people circumstances mm -hmm. that are in alignment I go places I pursue relationships I swagger mm -hmm. in relationship to my core values how I rap mm -hmm. wow. and so we say you're not wrapped right yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it's so tough. we need to wrap ourselves in the word of God that That's we it. can begin to be mm -hmm. A walking epistle, epistle yes. walking wrapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know that principle that you just started, repetition. Yes. Because anything you do, do repetitiously becomes easy. And whenever it becomes easy, it becomes a pleasure. And whenever it becomes a pleasure, you do it often. And when you do it often, it becomes a habit. Oh, did you come up with that? I did. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the amazing principles that we have learned within the BOSS program that That's was right. birthed 30 years ago. That's right. In, in, the, in the school districts of Compton, That's correct? Right. My and wife so, and I. Yeah, That's and correct. so we're, we just, you've been blessing so many people's lives. As, you, as you've been listening, 
you can learn so much through the things that you've been through. Mm-hmm. You know, if we go back to the conversation that we had earlier about how you went through certain things, and you're like, why am I going through this? Why am I over this in this particular industry? But it was something that went back and blessed you. That's so you know, correct. and if we can learn how to mine the experiences out of our lives and really to see God through those and really be able to add value and, and start forming those lessons, we can impact people's lives. And that's what you're doing through the Bob program. All the things that you went through, the repetition, easy, pleasure, often habit, you know, how to form, you know, a belief. We don't feel our way into an action. We act our way into we a feeling. Way into you know, all of the great things, they came from your story. They came from the things that you heard God through. And so legitimate versus illegitimate suffering. Talk to me about that. Legitimate suffering are those lessons that we go through and we recognize that every lesson, every asset has a liability. I'm speaking as an entrepreneur, businessman now. Mm -hmm. But you recognize that on the other side of every great adversity, Mm -hmm. our liability is an equal or greater asset for the war. On the other side of every great adversity Mm -hmm. is an equal or greater reward. Mm -hmm. On the other side of every liability is an equal or greater asset. Mm -hmm. The question is, is processing. Mm -hmm. Will you choose to process the liability into an asset to look for the good, the value, Mm -hmm. the learning? So with every lesson of suffering, I meet people that suffer and I tell I asked them the question, show me the asset. Mm. What did you learn from that? Yes. What did you glean from yes. that? What yes. was the equal or greater reward? Mm-hmm. And yes. most people only see liability. Mm. And they never choose to pursue the asset. Mm. And such illegitimate suffering when we go through liability yes. without pursuing the equal or greater reward is on the other side of it. Every great suffering carries with it a great reward. Wow. I don't know if you guys felt that, but that was deep. That was awesome. And and, and it it goes to show that you have a decision to make in every situation that you go through. You can either be a victim and say, why me? Why me? One of the things that I always say is in every situation, you have a decision either to break down or break through. And that legitimate suffering, if you really understand that legitimate suffering, that it was... I needed to go through that yes. because I'm I'm mining that experience and finding the asset rather than the liability. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so you're telling me about the despair, the, the yes. new equation that you have. Mm-hmm. So please, it's not share. it's not new. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 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 a principle of old that mm-hmm. many people are asking the question: Why suicide? Why are wealthy people committing suicide? It going doing these horrible things to themselves when they appear to have so much. Mm. But we forget that our despair, I gave an equation, D equals uh, S minus M. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Despair is a result of suffering without meaning. Mm. S minus M. Suffering without meaning Mm -hmm. equals despair. Mm We live in a world of suffering. At my age of 72, to get out of bed, I fight gravity, the <laughs> gravity that would suffer to keep me yeah, under. Yes. And so to live is to suffer, but mm. to survive mm. is to find meaning in one's suffering. Yes. And so in that sense of despair is that when we're going through life and we're going through life suffering, whatever they may be, and it's for no meaning. We don't understand why. We begin to be victimized as you begin to share. I'm just a victim. Everybody's doing stuff to me, and I'm just a dumping post. And I, me, my, and all of those suffering. It's suffering without meaning. And when you suffer without meaning, that is meaning is one of the greatest reasons for living. People get up in the morning to find meaning in living. And to now go through pain and and suffering without meaning mm-hmm. is despair, which is the is the beginning point, the tipping point for suicide and brokenness and mm-hmm. and, and and depression. Mm-hmm. And so, in everything, we want to understand that we are to be abased and we are to be abound. But in all of what we go through in life, is to have the meaning mm-hmm. that we're giving glory to 
to God, that we're giving it as unto the Lord. Whatever we go through, turning the other cheek, yeah. whatever we go through, yeah. our purpose is to find the meaning that is for something greater yeah. than the suffering, that I might now endure my suffering. Wow. That's helped so many people, and me personally, on so many levels. So, you know, thank you for that. And so you have uh, been married now to your friend Amen. for 43 43 years good years good years my and best so, friend and so we're going to invite mrs h onto this onto the set did and you see my face light up i did i did you, you turn into a whole different person yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that's the way that is that's my california girl yes <laughs> my california girl coming out of omaha nebraska i always wanted a california girl. and you got it i got my california girl <laughs> good deal very Amen. good well, thank you, Mrs. H, well, for you. joining us and letting us come into your amazing home. And so, how is it being married to Mr. H, Coach Al Hollingsworth? My knight in shining armor. <laughs> and uh, I'd have to give him a, a B plus. Is that all I give him a B plus? <laughs> I thought I could, don't I rank better than a B plus? Yes, you do. Oh, okay. Right. Erase that one. <laughs> So, you, tell me, talk to me about he's triple just, A. He's triple A, yeah, right? No, That's no, it. no, 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 no. <laughs> so, talk to me uh, real briefly about just how you met, and you know, I know that you started off working, you know, at the same place that he did, actually working for him, mm -hmm, right? So, mm -hmm, tell me about mm -hmm. that a little bit. Well, I received a phone call from I was working for an income tax company, and uh, a family member called me and said that this Mr. Hollingsworth had called for another family member, but they had already got another job. Mm -hmm. And they knew that my job was going to be ending up soon. Yeah. And so, okay, I called Mr. Hollingsworth and they gave me the information. So after work, I had an interview mm -hmm. with Mr. Hollingsworth. Mm -hmm. And um, I walked in, I said, oh, they've been to Africa. Because he had a lot of African artifacts mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I went through the process of filling out the application. The bookkeeper was staying over to, mm -hmm. to get me all set up. And probably, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes. And she buzzed him and she escorted me to the door. Mm -hmm. And she knocked on the door and he said, come in. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think we blew, I don't know if Treva ever existed anymore. <laughs> but it's like she was blown away like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I think he started reading my brain print, mm -hmm. scanning me all over. <laughs> and by the time he finished interviewing me, I didn't. I felt like I couldn't get up. Wow. I mean, it's like I had become a part of the couch. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, already, I had a job, mm -hmm. but he wanted me to start right away. I said, well, I at least need to get my current. Mm -hmm. Employer, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of notice. Yeah. And so I think it was about two or three days because it was like midweek. So that Monday coming up, I started my job wow. at Sheep My Corporation with Mr. <laughs> Alfred Delano Hollingsworth. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. And so love at first sight, pretty much. Um, I, I, yeah, I would say it like that okay mm. i i would say that i saw something in her that i really prayed would be there mm. and she became all that the bag of chip more <laughs> <laughs> he hired me to be a secretary yeah but when i reported to work mm. he said you know i was thinking would you be willing to try sales mm. i said okay <laughs> she was the first African-American woman first in sale period. and blew the market yeah, out. Wow. She wow. was the most successful, one of the most successful salesperson mm -hmm. period in, in Los Angeles. Wow. And together we grew the business. With my fro and mini skirts. Ah, <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, so give us some keys, okay? 43 years of marriage. Yeah. How does one make it last 43 years we're friends okay other than jesus nobody knows everything about this woman but this man mm. that's that's it we're friends the good yeah. the bad the ugly the crazy yeah. the 
Lock yeah. her up. Because yeah, yeah. some people, whenever they hear you say my friend, they're like, wait, I thought that you guys were married. But yeah, mm -hmm. who says that whenever you get married, you have to stop being friends, you know? That's right. So, That's right. I, and I love that. And, you know, this is strategic. Everything is strategic with the Hollands work. And, you know, even to the place where they're sitting, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, his honey is on his heart side. Always right? on the heart. Always <laughs> on the heart. And that's one of the things that um, I think that God has really allowed the success that we have experienced. There's, we know how we create things in agreement. Mm. Uh, we had one of the largest uh, beauty salons in the country. We outdid Vidal Sassoon. Really? In Seven days a week. Seven, that's what was in the Jerry Curl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was right there on Crenshaw, Sound Barber, and uh, David May mm. owned all May that Company. property. And wow. he was stressed out because he couldn't get good tenants. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he called you. And... and uh, we came with into partnership, mm -hmm. and uh, Hattie and I and our we had a jacuzzi in our home at that time, mm -hmm. the steam and jacuzzi, and we went in and started dreaming mm -hmm. of what yeah. it would be, and it became we had uh, one of the finest in the entire country. We had more volume, open seven days a week. Yeah, wow. we had stars coming through and all, wow. and uh, our world beauty center. Wow, and so, but it started the point that I make is that it started with us knowing we could do it because if we were in agreement yes. of an idea, nothing was impossible. And that's it. Agreement is totally. so important. I tell couples and people who are getting married, I see a lot of married couples and get to counsel them. Um, one of the, I said, if you can just fight for one thing, mm -hmm. fight for agreement. Psalms 133, it talks about how blessed it is, is it, how good is it for brethren to dwell together in unity and it goes through and then at the very end it says it is there that's the commanded blessing of the Lord and so when you're in agreement you're operating under the commanded blessing of the Lord and that's what it seems like that over the tenure of your business over the tenure of the ministry over the tenure of your marriage you've had the agreement I think they both agree though mm -hmm. We put God first. Yes, absolutely. And God is at the center mm -hmm. for both of us. Mm -hmm. And then we are second to that. That's good. Very good. Well, thank you so very much for allowing us to in your home, in your life space, and giving us some amazing nuggets. And we just thank you for your great marriage and your great example that you're giving, not only people here in California, but all over the world with the Boston Movement Program to the Vertical Leap Program that is expanding all across the country now in St. Louis and, you know, through the entire Kojic, you know, congregation. And, and it's just, it's just awesome to see people who found their purpose, know what God has called them to do and lean into it with full force. That's what Kingdom Business is all about. It's about showing how we are expanding the kingdom of God in everyday life. So, until next time, thank you so very much. You can join us next Sunday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 9 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time and 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So don't miss it. We're so grateful to have you. We love you, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Ever wonder what you're going to do on Sunday night? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to go to OCNbroadcasting.com and click on the Kingdom Business Show and watch it at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, and 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. This is Kingdom Business.